Welcome to the Airgun Show. This week we've got the new FX Wildcat Multi-Shot PCP on test, but first I'm going to demonstrate just how effective a bait station can be when targeting grey squirrels in summer woodland. We're back out targeting grey squirrels today. Some of you will probably recall that a few weeks ago I set up a feeder in the woods. Unfortunately it proved to be in the wrong place. It was in situ for a fortnight and over a couple of visits I only managed to account for one squirrel. Possible reason for that was that fairly close by we spotted what looked like a raptor's feeding post. Now with birds of prey nearby it could be that the squirrels were just reluctant to come out into the open and feed in that position. So what we've done is we've moved the feeder into another area of the woods quite close to what's soon going to be set up as a pheasant release pen. Now, I'm quite hopeful. I checked it a couple of evenings ago. The peanuts seem to be going, so we'll give it a try this morning and see how we get on. So the trap is set. The squirrels appear to have developed a taste for the peanuts in the new target zone, so I just need to get into position and wait for the diners to arrive. Here's that pheasant release pen. If we don't thin out the grey squirrels now, they'll soon be scoffing their way through the pheasant feed. A costly problem for the gamekeeper. My simple hide is already in place, so all I need to do is slip inside and make myself comfortable. Setting up the net in advance gives wildlife time to become accustomed to it, and also means there's less disturbance when you turn up to shoot. Right, I'm not going to go and check on the feeder because I don't want to make any more disturbance than I have to. I checked it yesterday evening I know there should still be plenty of nuts in there this morning, so it's just a question of now settling down and hoping that those squirrels venture back out. There's a chance of encountering crows and magpies on this permission, so I'm putting on my head net for extra concealment, just in case I get a chance at the sharp-eyed corvids. With all my preparations made, it's just a case of loading up the day state, ready for action. The hide setup today is pretty much exactly the same as I set up in the last location. It's just a very simple camouflage screen. Only difference really is today that I haven't used poles because we've got these overhanging yew trees. I've just hooked it up onto those. And to be honest, we probably don't even need it because those yews are casting so much shade on this area of the woods. No squirrels yet, but we've had several songbirds coming back and forth, including a nuthatch. Now, apart from being really nice to see, it's also quite handy, especially when you first set up the feeder, if you get a few birds visiting, because a wooden box nailed to a tree, that probably will draw the attention of squirrels because they're quite inquisitive animals. However, if you've got a flurry of songbirds fluttering back and forth, that really does signal to the squirrels that there's likely to be a feeding opportunity there, and they're likely to home in that much more quickly. Eventually I spot what I came here for, and the first squirrel of the morning clambers onto the feeder.
Initially it won't keep still, but I'm in no hurry. The squirrel is oblivious to me in the hide, so I bide my time until I get a good, clear shot. was a bit fidgety but as ever patience paid off. That's the first one in the bag. So it's in with another pellet and it's not long before I get another chance. for a bit but it was just a nervous reflex it was hit right through the head so would have been lights out as soon as that pellet hit home the morning wears on but the squirrels keep coming and there's soon another flurry of activity by the feeder squirrels all over the place then. I missed a couple of chances but to be honest I'm not too bothered. When you've got more than one squirrel around they tend to be very erratic, darting about and chasing each other. Now I'd rather miss a chance knowing that they're going to come back because they've got a taste for those peanuts than take a risky shot. A commotion in the treetops has me scanning through the binoculars but I can't spot the culprit through the leaves. So I quick look round with the binoculars then because I thought I heard something moving up in the treetops, but with all the summer growth around, it's virtually impossible to spot anything, which really does prove the benefit of having a nut feeder out in the open to draw those squirrels down from the foliage. And sure enough, Another squirrel soon succumbs to the appeal of the peanuts. Moving the feeder to a new location has proved to be a very good decision and I'm soon on to another squirrel. Another clean kill and it's in with another pellet as the action comes thick and fast. The squirrels really can't get enough of those peanuts this morning. It's not unusual for headshot squirrels to hang on for a while. It's just a nervous reflex and they're usually dead by the time they hit the ground. I wait it out in the hope of bagging another, but reluctantly have to call it a day and head for home. Right, well we've run out of time, so I'm just going to head over pick up the squirrels now but I certainly think it's going to be worth another visit there seem to be plenty coming to the feeder as much as I'd have liked to have stayed longer I have to be pleased with the result of my morning in the hide
Well, five squirrels there, not a bad morning's work. And that's a morning also when you've got the summer growth around, it would have been so difficult to have targeted them without the nut feeder here. And just looking at the ground while I've been picking up, apart from being splattered with blood, it's also absolutely littered with the husks of the peanuts where the squirrels have been visiting here. And also, there was a jay's feather down there too, so it looks like the wily old jays have been tucking in as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave the nut feeder and the hide net in situ, get back here again, because I'm pretty sure there's more action to be had from this spot. A short but effective session after the squirrels there. And now it's over to the Air Gun Show news. This is the Air Gun Show news. Brought to you by the Air Gun Center. Basque has become a signatory to the UK Squirrel Accord, along with the RSPB, DEFRA and the National Trust, with the aim of securing and expanding the red squirrel population. A key challenge is the control of non-native grey squirrels, which have had a negative impact on native reds. Grey's bark stripping habit also costs the forestry industry £14 million a year. Basque has long supported conservation projects for red squirrels and is currently working with partners on targeted recovery projects. It's also setting up groups of Basque members to control greys. Top quality optics don't come cheap and the new K1050 IFT from Carles distributed in the UK by Ruag has a price tag of £2,458. Developed with input from field target shooter Matt Hurst, the scope boasts precise parallax adjustment between 8 and 60 meters and an illuminated reticle. Supplied with a distinctive top turret parallax wheel, it's available in black or silver, offers a zoom range from 10 to 50 times, plus excellent light gathering through its 56 millimeter objective lens. It comes with an 11 year worldwide warranty. Registration is now open for the 2015 Air Arms RSN 10 Memorial Open Cup Challenge, which takes place at Northall Farm in Fletching, East Sussex on the 6th of September. Made up of two 25 target courses and following UKA HFT rules, the competition is open to all with prizes including an Air Arms HFT 500. Entry is £15 and includes light refreshments, lunch and afternoon tea. Book online at www.air-arms.co.uk And finally, there's still time to complete Basque's air gun survey and be in with a chance of winning a BSA Lightning XL SE in scope. The organisation is carrying out the survey to ensure that its membership package and wide range of services meet the needs of the modern air gun shooter. And you don't even need to be a member to take part. Submissions must be made by the end of August and you can find a link to the survey, which shouldn't take more than five minutes to complete, at the Airgun Shooter Magazine website, airgunmagazine.co.uk. That was the Airgun Show News. I first saw this week's test gun at the Ewa show in Nuremberg back in March and I've been looking forward to getting my hands on it ever since. It's the new Wildcat from FX Air Guns, a compact bullpup distributed in the UK by ASI. The Wildcat is a high quality Swedish made air gun that has a price tag of £899. It tips the scales at just under 3 kilos and measures up at 78 centimetres from butt to muzzle. Those compact proportions make for an extremely pointable air gun that feels very steady on aim. The Wildcat synthetic stock really is kind on the eye, but it hasn't been designed just to look good. It's got an anti-glare, soft touch finish which literally sticks to your hand. The wide forend has subtle grooves on either side which make for a really comfortable hold and the sculpted pistol grip 
cradles your hand to set you up perfectly for the trigger. The FX name is synonymous with serious build quality and the Wildcat takes that to the next level. It's brilliantly engineered and feels very solid despite being a relatively lightweight air gun. The fully shrouded barrel looks really purposeful and also serves as a very effective silencer. It's finished in the new FX tactical coating which not only helps to protect it from the elements but also cuts down on the flash that can spook wary quarry. The long one-piece scope rail gives plenty of versatility when it comes to mounting optics. Ballpup type air guns can be inclined to have quite high rails which tends to make them feel top heavy. However, the Wildcats is relatively low to the barrel. That said, the height of the cheek piece means that low scope mounts would compromise eye scope alignment. I've just about managed to get away with medium height mounts and the centre of the tube is about 65 millimetres above the centre of the bore. Filling the Wildcat is simple. Twist the dust cap at the front of the cylinder to expose the inlet, push in the quick fill probe and fill to a maximum of 230 bar. At sub 12 foot pounds you can expect comfortably over 200 shots in 177 and 22 caliber and you can keep a tab on air reserves via the gauge at the front. The new 8 shot magazine is brilliant. Pull back the side lever and it pulls out ready for loading which is just a matter of pushing pellets in from the rear. It couldn't be simpler. Pop it back in, return the side lever and it's ready to shoot. That chunky side lever is in exactly the right place. Pull it back to cock the gun and cycle the magazine, then push it forwards to seat the pellet. The two stage trigger is adjustable, but this one was perfect from the factory. It's an excellent unit with a wide, flat, comfortable blade. The first stage comes to a distinct stop and the second stage is crisp and predictable without feeling too light. The all-important safety catch is nice and positive. You pull it back to make the gun safe, then nudge it forwards when you're ready to take the shot. My only niggle with it is that it's situated a little too far back for my liking. I also think that a more forward position would reduce the risk of it snagging on your clothing when you're walking around with the gun. Accuracy should be a given with this air gun. It's regulated for optimum consistency and features the acclaimed FX smooth twist barrel which gave an excellent account of itself when we tested the Verminator Mark II. So let's put it to test on some paper and see if it lives up to expectations. Well, that's what the Wildcat is capable of. The 2.2 calibre test gun has knocked out this five shot group which easily falls within 10 millimetres from centre to centre at 25 metres. And to be honest, it wasn't that difficult. The Wildcat is such a slick shooter that it really does breed confidence and that translates into brilliant performance downrange. The FX Wildcat retails for the best part of £900 but you really do get your money's worth. It's lightweight, pointable and extremely well engineered. Add to that its neat styling, slick multi-shot firing system and consistently accurate performance and it really is hard to find fault with it. It's not flimsy either and should give years of first class performance to any hunter looking for a reliable, compact PCP. That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thanks for watching, and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, it's time you joined the organisation that works to promote and protect your sport. Yeah.